seriously, that that was six seconds. Like ten seconds is a really long time. How is it that long? Why? Um, hello. That's what she's. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> Megan and Kara. Uh huh. I was getting ready to say Patreon. But I think this is actual regular feed. Right, yeah. So I should tell you that this is the Witches, Magic, Murder, and Mystery <laughs> podcast. I'm Gara. <laughs> and I'm Megan. Mm-hmm. And we're recording some epi- extra episodes. Epilogues. <laughs> ahead of time. In anticipation of Kara taking a little maternity leave. A little break, please. Now, Kara, being Kara, is like, I don't need a maternity leave. I will have a baby and do this podcast the next day. Yeah. And... I am like, Kara, <laughs> I love you. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> so I will be so delirious. <laughs> It'll be great. It would be really entertaining. If you think she's hard to follow now. <laughs> All right. Imagine so we. Two hours of sleep. Yeah. So just to let you know, this episode is recorded ahead of time. So if there's anything big going on in the news that we're not commenting on, yeah. that's why. We have no clue what's happening. Yeah. Please don't find us insensitive or, you know. Yeah. Anything. Please only love us. Please <laughs> love us. And if you don't love us, move along. It's okay to find a different <laughs> podcast. We know we're not for everybody. We're just majority. for the best people. <laughs> we're just for the majority. <laughs> All right. So today, uh-huh. what I decided I would do, one of the things I'm focusing on as I work on my extra episodes, is something that I have wanted to talk about. Yes. But it's such a big topic that mm-hmm. I've been a little bit like, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you've been talking about this since yes. the beginning of the podcast. So, like, you know, do it? our podcast is the Witches Magic Murder Mystery Podcast. Right. So it seems only obvious that we would at some point talk about the Salem Witch Trials. Right. And like I said, I want to cover them, mm-hmm. but it's a really big undertaking. And I also feel like everybody knows the Salem Witch Trials, right? Yes. And I like covering the witches that a lot of people haven't heard of. Mm-hmm. And like, you know. Just the feisty women. Mother Shipton. Yeah. And Grace oh gosh, Sherwood yeah. and Biddy Early and everybody. Mm-hmm. So... That's what basically what I decided is that I'm going to treat the women who died in the witch trials like I treat the women that we cover in our other witch episodes. Yeah. I'm going to try to tell the stories of those women mm-hmm. rather than the story of the trials, you know? Perfect. It's all going to be wrapped together anyway, but I'm really hoping. Um, we'll see if I succeed, but I'm hoping to focus as much on the women as I can. Of course, this did all happen back in 1692, <laughs> but it is pretty well documented. It so, really is. I mean, hopefully I'll be able to find a lot. Yeah. So, the Salem Witch Trials took place, like I said, in 1692. About 200 people were tried, 19 were hanged, and then one, Giles Corey, who Kara talked about in episode 91, was pressed to death. Which is wild. Oh, man. So, today, we're going to talk about the very first person to be executed for witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials, and that was 60-year-old Bridget Bishop. Bridget was born sometime in 1632 in Norwich, England. Okay. She grew up there living with her mother and father, John and Rebecca, and her sister, Mercy. Mm-hmm. I feel like Mercy used to be a pretty common name. Yep. But not anymore, I guess. No. Bridget had a few different last names. Her maiden name was Magnus, but her family adopted the last name Player, which was John's mother's maiden name. What an interesting player. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where exactly that. Right. Would have come from. Right. Um, I know a lot of times back then they were their last name was determined by where they lived. Oh yeah, yeah. But I don't know. She first married around twenty eight years old, which seems old. I was going to say that seems for the time. Yeah. I mean, obviously, right now it is not old. No. Okay. You, you, so you, if you, yeah, you don't. I don't care if y'all ever get married. Yeah. But back then, to be twenty eight years old and getting married for the first time, no, seems I feel like, like they got married at like sixteen. Right. So she married Captain Samuel Wesselby on April 13th, 1660. Cool last name. I know. Bridget and Samuel had three kids, two sons and a daughter named John, Benjamin, and Mary. So Samuel died in 1666, only six years after they oh, got wow. married. And Bridget went on to marry again, this time to a widower and businessman named Thomas Oliver. The next year, Bridget and Thomas had a daughter, Christian. Okay. Now at this point, so they live four kids total. Yes. Okay. At this point, they live in Salem, and I can't find a lot of information on exactly when Bridget came to America, but I do know that Thomas had lived in Salem before and then gone back to England, oh. and I'm pretty sure that that's when he met Bridget, and she he took her back to Salem okay. with him. And in Salem, Thomas owned a tavern, 
and Bridget helped him run it. Oh, a little entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And now back then, taverns weren't just places to go drink. They were Mm -hmm. also, generally, they would have an upstairs with, like, rooms that you could rent to stay in. Like a little hotel. Like a casino. So, already at this time, Bridget was known for living a flamboyant lifestyle. Mm -hmm. From what I read, she was just the type of person who got noticed. Right. She wasn't like the demure wallflower type, like you. (laughs) She she wasn't. What do you mean? She had big, loud fights with Thomas, like often in public. Oh. And from what I can tell, this was Thomas's type. He's like, baby, talk to me. Right. (laughs) Because I read a little bit, this whole thing of like, wait, he had already been in Salem confused me. Yeah. And so when I started looking more into Thomas's life, I read a little bit about his first wife. And she was a loud, opinionated woman. Mm. And the line I read was (laughs) his, quote, his unwillingness to control her led to them being exiled back to England. (laughs) (laughs) And for some reason, I just find that endearing. He's like, yeah, I can't do anything with her. Like, what What do you want me to do? Right. I kind of like Look it. at her. <laughs> I kind of like it. Yeah, you know, he's like, she's great, isn't she? Yeah. She's like, a firecracker. She's, Whatever words people use. She's the to. best. Yeah. <laughs> she's hot. Don't you just love her? You should see her in bed. <laughs> Another thing about Bridget is that she didn't dress like most women. So she doesn't act the way women are supposed mm-hmm. to act. And now she also doesn't dress the way supposed women. Supposed to act. Right. She was described as wearing a black cap and a black hat and a red Paragon bodice, bordered and looped with different colors. Did you all see this hourglass body? I'm not having this. <laughs> it was considered pretty showy, like she was looking for attention, and that was a no-no. But he probably, it sounds like he probably loved that, too. Probably. I mean, he married her and yeah. brought him back to, brought her back to Salem. He, yeah. He must have liked her. Yeah. Her wardrobe was actually used as evidence later in her witchcraft trial. Of course it, it was. It was the 1692 equivalent of, but what was she wearing? <laughs> she did it to herself. So with her clothing, when she went on trial, right? Um, the town dyer, like like mm-hmm. clothing dyer, yeah. testified against her because <laughs> she brought him a bunch of pieces of lace that were not, according to him, the size and shape that would be needed in the wardrobe of a plain and honest <laughs> woman. <laughs> And if there's anything we all strive to be, it's plain. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes, please. <laughs> but anyway, she's not on trial yet. Uh, Thomas died in June of 1679, and he left his estate, which included property, to his wife. Okay. So now she's a loud woman who owns property. Mm. So she's basically asking for it, Kara. Right, yeah. Um, she is in trouble now. Right. Bridget's in-laws, Thomas's children from his first marriage, weren't happy that Bridget inherited so much from Thomas. And one of those daughters had married a constable. Oh, of course she did. So that didn't help anything. Of course she did. Bridget married again in 1687 to Edward Bishop. And he was about 16 years younger than her, (laughs) which I was like, get it, Bridget. And the two of them ran two taverns in town. They'd have guests and they'd all stay up super late drinking and playing shovelboard. Look at her. And I was like, okay, shovelboard? Right. What is that? (laughs) It sounds like shuffleboard. Uh And it is a lot like it. It was really popular among 15th century colonists. They would just get together and play this game. Yes. And drink. Basically, so you know shuffleboard, shuffleboard is like across the floor. Right. This is more of a tabletop game. Okay. Basically, you would shove a British coin across the table. Mm -hmm. So when I looked it up to find out more about it, it says that the game originated in England. And this is the part that I think is funny. It became so popular that people just wanted to play it all the time and never go to work. Oh, my gosh. So the game was banned because they were like, y'all got to do stuff. (laughs) We need you to work. We We need need you to pay taxes. We need you to, yeah. We can't just play this game all the time. You're not 12 anymore. So Bridget was a woman running two businesses, which is surely the devil's work. Oh, my gosh. How else could she be productive? She didn't act like everybody else, and she didn't dress like everybody else. And to top it off, Kara. Mm -hmm. She just didn't care what other people had to say about it. Oh, she didn't. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's really no surprise that on April 18th, 1692, Bridget was arrested for witchcraft. She was? (laughs) Yeah. People didn't like her? What? This actually wasn't the first time that she'd been accused of witchcraft. She'd been charged in 1680. People accused her of witching Thomas to death. Stop it. Whatever that means. (laughs) I mean, if it's true, it sounds like something he probably enjoyed. Her muscular dexterity got to it. <laughs> but really, 
Today, people think it was just something her in-laws had accused her of because they were trying to get her inheritance. Right. And she was clear of the accusations anyway. Okay. But this time, in 1692, she was accused of bewitching five young women ranging in age from 12 to 17. Abigail Williams, Anne Putnam Jr. Mm, of course, Aunt. She's in everything. Mercy Lewis, Mary Walcott, and Elizabeth Hubbard. Bridget stated that she had never met any of her accusers. Her trial lasted eight days and officially kicked off what would become known as the Salem Witch Trials. So during the trial, a lot of people testified against Bridget, saying mm-hmm. that the shape of Bridget would pinch, choke, or bite them. Stop it. One person said, the shape threaded, threatened, threaded, to drown me. Mm. And I guess shape is like her... Spears? I don't know. I don't know. They're not, it's like they're not quite saying Bridget. Yeah. But like her form. Yeah. I don't understand. It came unto me. One woman said that Bridget. Like, that's how I bewitched everybody else. <laughs> yeah. With my shape. <laughs> you just don't like it. It's good. <laughs> One woman said that Bridget's apparition tore her coat. And then they looked at her coat right there in trial. And her coat was torn. Oh. And I don't know what further proof you need, Kara. She did it. (laughs) Some girls said all Bridget had to do was look at them and it would hurt. Which I could do that to people too. (laughs) Listen, you get on the wrong side of me on the wrong day. (laughs) And you don't know what's going to happen to you. Yeah. You say something mean to my kid. Oh my gosh. I can hurt you with my face Mm -hmm. also. Yeah. According to an account written of the trial at the time, anytime Bishop would look at one of her accusers, they would be struck down. (laughs) And then (laughs) she was the only one who could revive them. Oh, she was. Even Bridget's own husband, that 16-year younger, Edward, claimed that she praised the devil. Oh, man. So obviously, with all of this mountain of evidence, Bridget was found guilty and sentenced to death. Of course she was. On June 10th, 1692, she was taken to Gallows Hill, where a crowd watched as she was hanged. She displayed no remorse and professed her innocence until she died. Years later, several of those who had testified against Bridget Bishop had deathbed confessions in which they claimed that their accusations had been the work of the devil. So they were witches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A month or so after Bridget was put to death, one of the judges in her trial, Nathaniel Saltonstall, Mm -hmm. he resigned because of this trial. He was like, sleep at night. It said he was dissatisfied with the court's methods. Wow. He knew it wasn't right. And the governor of Massachusetts went to Boston to consult with the ministers there about this because he also had doubts about the court's methods. Right. But the ministers were like, yeah, the proceedings should be, quote, vigorously carried on. We're going to put bricks on them and throw them in the river and see if they float. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about some of the um, witch tests they would do where it's like they would they would bound the, bind the women mm-hmm. and then throw them in the water. If you float, you're a witch, right? If you sink, you're, yeah. If you sink, you're not a witch, but you die. Right, so exactly. So, either way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? And then, like, what, they get their blood and put it in a bowl, and if it does something, then they're a witch, and you're like, okay, but. There was also something that was like, I, I think this happened in the witch trials. They made a cake with, like, the accused witch's urine. Oh. And if it made you sick, who was a witch? And I'm like, wouldn't like, it just make you sick? Wouldn't that, like, yeah. Why? Oh. Right. Yeah. Who came up with that test? Like right. Somebody was just like, got an idea. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I had just was peeing one night and, <laughs> and uh, I had the thought. Like, who Instead had that of thought? wasting this in a um, oh outhouse, God. let's uh, <laughs> give it a try. <laughs> let's make some cakes. Yeah. Oh, ooh. Sweeney Todd. Right. Or man pies. So, <laughs> so I think it's interesting that this was the very first execution. She wasn't the first to be arrested for witchcraft. There's actually, and I'll talk about those in the next episode, but there was a group of women who had already um, been arrested before Bridget was even arrested. But their death sentences had not been carried out yet. So Mm -hmm. she was the first one to die. And I think it's interesting that, like, it was after her death that this judge was like, no. You know, like, it's like he finally saw it through and was just like, oh, wait, this was wrong. Yeah. This didn't feel right. Yeah. Um, I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And I guess the ministers that the governor went and talked to were just, it's one of those things where they must have been like, yes, we may put some Mm -hmm. innocent women to death, but 
it's worth it to catch the real witches or something. Right. Which I'm like, I feel like that's the complete backward way. And they're like, who needs these women, women anyways? Right. <laughs> There's too many women. We need them to shut up. Yeah. I just feel like that's backwards. You should look at it like if even one innocent person right. is put to death, that's right. wrong. Yeah. And if you're doing this all in the name of your God. Exactly. He cannot possibly want that either. Yeah. You would think. Exactly. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> in my opinion. What would Jesus do? <laughs> okay. Bad. So that <laughs> sheep. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, this uh, has been the first in the series about the Salem Witch Trials, and there will be more. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, if you're hearing these, that must mean that Kara has started her maternity leave. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm sure we'll have news about that already. But. Right. All right. We love you guys. Thanks so much much for listening. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.